So, to show you what this thing can do in terms of media management and metadata, please welcome Philip Hodgetts. Before I get started with Vertigo and Pro Editor, let me just show you where we started. This is an original Final Cut Macromedia Final Cut T-shirt from NAB 98. Whoa, the best thing is I fit in it again. <laughs> that, the reason it's in good, such, such good condition is that I haven't in the meantime. So, uh, the code name was Vertigo and the project that X, in Xcode, the brand new project that they started about three years ago was called Pro Editor. That's deep in the guts. That's the name of the project that they created. So right from day one, it was designed as a pro editor. But as I've written on my blog, there are many types of pro editors. Uh, and this suits a uh, direct word from Apple today, this morning, uh, the majority of their professional customers. Their words, not mine. OK. I'm going to talk about the metadata, which is all of your media and clip management, because I've been talking about metadata for at least a decade now. Everyone's been pretty bored with me talking about it over that time. Um, uh, as I like to say, jokingly say, I have been singing the metadata song for a long time. Well, Apple just finally joined in with a very rousing chorus. So let's concentrate on the event library. Um, probably not the world's best choice of terms, particularly since it shares the term with, uh, with another application that Apple has. Um, but when I, when I took up the, the cause with Apple and said, why event? And they said, well, what isn't really an event? Um, a daily shoot is an event. Uh, anything that has a time constraint is an event. So personally, I'd have called it media library because it really is a small asset management tool. Uh, it, defines, it defaults to have the drive displayed and the years displayed like that other app. Um, I don't think I need to know where my, when my material comes from and I don't think I need to see what drive it's on, although the drive can be useful um, because the events live on one drive. So I'm just going to turn off the, the date organisation completely and for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to turn off the, the, the disk-based grouping as well. So it's now based on an event. An event is where you manage your clips. And it's a big difference between Final Cut Pro 10 and its, and its predecessor is that your media library is independent of your edits, which confusingly are called projects. Um, you can have multiple projects open and, and uh, other people are going to go into that. I'm going to focus on the metadata. I have a couple of projects here. I have a couple of events here. One is already keyworded up, the other one not so much. Uh, so what I'm going to do is this event has no media in it at the moment. And I'm going to import that media just to point out one important thing. I don't have a camera connected, so obviously I'm not going to import from camera. I'm going to import files. And I'm going to, you know, so I'm going to add it to an existing event. I'm not going to copy the files because they're already on this drive. I don't need to copy them. Um, and I'm not going to create optimized media, which is really just a background process to create. ProRes 422 media in the background, and I'm not going to create proxy media. And because analysis is time consuming, if there was one like dirty little secret they didn't tell us in the demos, the one thing they didn't quite get through, and that's is the analysis for all of these things can take a lot of time and use an enormous amount of processor power. If you need to get your fans working and blow the dust out of your computer, <laughs> Analyze, <laughs> analyze a whole bunch of media. Uh, the Zion National Park stuff, it's only about 40 relatively short clips. Uh, took something like 12 hours to render on an i7 quad core. I mean, not to render, that was just to analyze. However, I, there is nothing that stops you working apart from the noise of the, of the fans. It continues to be very agile, very flexible. <laughs> the important thing to remember is that you can actually put your media anywhere you like. Yes, it does default to go internally, um, and at the moment there is no preference for a default location, but if you dig through the code, you'll discover that there is, in fact, the potential for a preference for a default location. Uh, hmm? Well, it, it, there is, there's a preference for a default location, but there is currently no way to set that preference. <laughs> um, 
and I know that th this is the way code works. There's a lot of things in the code. There are foundations for many of the things that they've talked about that are coming. They, indeed, they are coming because the foundation is already there. We, we see it built strongly. This is uh, definitely slower on my Core 2 Duo, an 18-month-old computer, than the, than the i7 that I've done most of my testing with. And the fact that I still have 10 other apps opening. I put 20 of them. Hi, Stacey. <laughs> You can certainly make an event with no media in it, yes. And as soon as the spinning beach ball finishes, I will do just that. <sighs> you can also create a keyword collection with no, with no media in it. And so if you, if you wanted to capture a bunch of dailies into, a, into an existing event, create a new keyword collection, name the collection with what you want, how you want to name it by the project or anything. Um, I don't want all of that down there, and I'm just going to close up my, my project library. Um, and we'll go to some media that I have already keyworded. He goes, I've only got half an hour. Yeah. Um, so these are, these are your bins. If I go to my, my event, I can see everything that is in. And so let's close that so we have some real estate here. Thank you. Uh, you can see everything that is in my event. There's about uh, 68 clips in there. But I can, I can organise those any which way I want. And this is the power of keywords. Um, but let's come back to the question that Misha asked, because I have sh terrible short-term memory, and uh, say we want a new event. And I have a new event, and it didn't actually allow me to, to choose where I put that event, so I'm going to call the event uh, Lassie Pug. G-G. You'd think by now, Michael, I'd know how to spell that. And I'm just going to check where it is because I'm going to see if I can move the event to my external drive. Yeah. Don't do that. Uh, there's supposed to be another drive there, folks. Okay. Yes, it will move it. I've been doing, I moved it out of the in internal drive when I first created it. So um, that's a good question as to why. It won't work. If I were to come straight from the camera now or straight from, um, if I just ring one or two files in, perhaps that'll work better. And uh, this drive that doesn't exist, Final Cut Pro, there you go. Let's, let's have some nice... Will it let you move it to the exact location where you want to or is that the root level of that drive? Right. That's a very good question, Marcelo. Um, I have been in enough places with Final Cut Pro systems to know that the last thing you want to do is let your average Final Cut Pro editor determine where their media goes. <laughs> In, other than the file, the project that it goes to. So there's always on the, whatever drive you choose, it's got a Final Cut Events folder, which is where it was moved, where it is. I see it was created properly on my external drive, which is why it only wanted to let me move to the internal drive. That's why I didn't see any other choice. So there's the event I just created. Um, and these are event folders for each event. And you can see that we have analysis files created, original media files, render files, transcoded media. There would be a folder in here for optimised media for the ProRes if you choose to do that and the proxy media um, if you want to generate proxy media so that you can offline and online. Uh, in fact, proxy media is really sweet. Once you generate proxy media, um, let me just show you how easy it is. I'm going to go back to my Zion National Park and I want to go between my currently my full resolution media and my proxy media. In other words, I, I want to do like reconnect media between the offline and the online, and I just did it. I'm now playing proxy media, not full resolution media, and that's Pro ProRes proxy, not full resolution ProRes 422. And, it's ch and, it's ch and if, I, if I go back to any of my other events, You can absolutely move things from one drive to the other. It imports it to where it's going to put it, and then you move it back out. It, no, it imports it to where you set it. The, the, my, 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 I think it will go to where, the last, where your last event was. As I said, there's a, there's a preference for that that's not activated yet. Uh, but you can see that all of my other media, because it does change all of your events over to proxy media simultaneously, are offline, but only Zion is available because that's the only one that I have proxy media for. Um, but if I go back to full resolution media, Voila. Now I swap back to the full resolution media for everything. And so 
so it's incredibly easy to swap between offline and online media uh, and generate ProRes in the, proxies in the background. Uh, if we wanted to create some keyword collections for this event, there aren't very many because this is really um, only in this, this uh, keyword collection. Uh, if I wanted to add a, to bring all of these Sound of Music ones together into one folder, um, I can just select. So you don't have to select continuously. You can select whichever way. And now I can just go into Command K to bring up my keyword entry. It's picked up the folder because one of the options on import is if you're importing media from an existing folder on the drive, it will apply the folder name as a keyword collection. So it immediately appears in this my the assistant editor folder over here is a keyword collection that was generated because I said pull in the media and use the folder name as a keyword. So it's applied the keyword when it ingested it and created a keyword collection. Keyword collections are so like bins that I, I, I really it's really hard to describe what's different. You can drag, you can create a new keyword collection. If, let me just finish this and go sound of music. And as soon as I go return, I get spinning beach ball because this computer's relatively slow. And you'll see immediately that I have a sound of music smart collection was generated with all of those clips in it that I just applied the, that keyword collection to. That's so, I mean, that, how long would it have taken you to move, move six clips up into the viewer and drag them, about the same to drag them to a bin? But, um, but now if I want to add more, if I had more that I could find that um, this Susan Shulman one should have actually been in there. So do I have to open up the keyword collection thing and type? No, I just go, and now if I come into that bin, Susan Shulman's there, but she has Sound of Music applied. When you drag a clip or a part of a clip to a keyword collection, that clip or part of a range is automatic, automatically has the keyword applied to it and becomes part of that keyword collection. And a clip can be in as many keyword collections as you want. So if I were to say that, let me just say, I just want to do a little bit of her and take that down to that Sound of Music bin. Now I've got a keyword. There's, there it is in this collection. But it's only the bit, it's only my range that is in this collection. So I've broke, keyword collections also replace subclips. So they did so much easier because you can play, well, if I didn't want that, I could come back to my full length version of that um, and create a different range and put that into a different collection, just like that. And it'll be, it'll be added to that collection immediately. More to the point, you've got in your keyword collection, you can, um, you can create as many of these shortcuts as you want and apply them with a keystroke. So if I wanted to um, use the control one, if I were to pick something else uh, in there, and let me see something, this, so something that should have been in there. So I'll just control one, see the little animation that's added to the keyword, and I'm going to go down, and control one again, and the keyword was added to those, and they are already in, they're now in that keyword collection. So what could be easier than organizing media that way?